guys, thanks for joining me. This is part two of the two-part uh, kitchen cabinet refinishing video. Well, I finished the doors and so now I'm going to begin working on the frames of the cabinets. As you can see, I've taped everything off. The whole kitchen is enclosed in plastic because there's gonna be a lot of dust. Um, make sure you tape off any vents so the vents for the microwave, vents for the floor that come in and, or go out. We don't want that dust getting into the heating or cooling system. So everything is taped off and now I'm going to start sanding with my 100 grit sandpaper. So now I finished uh, the sanding with the 100 grit and the 220 on all the cabinet frames and I have also kind of vacuumed up most of the dust, got what I could and wiped out the inside and what I'm going to do with the outside is I'm going to use tack cloth. It's called tack cloth because it's tacky and um, any lint or remaining dust is going to stick to this. And so it gets a real clean surface for when you're getting ready to stain or put a clear coat on something. Now I'm going to begin staining. With this project, we're going to use two different stains. Um, this is Gunstock from Minwax. And I have my foamy brush. I'm just going to apply it. And I have all my paper towels ready. We'll let it soak in a little first. And then we'll wipe it off. So by the time I got done with this cabinet, it's dry enough for me to go ahead and start wiping it down. Um, and I put some pressure on it. And what you want to do is you want to just make sure to get everything that comes off onto the paper towel off. And eventually you will keep going and nothing really will come up anymore. And that's when you know that you're done. What you don't want is for it to dry on there and get gummy. That will not give you a good result at all. So wipe all of it down. Now the gun stock stain has dried, so I'm gonna go on top of that with red mahogany. And just the same application, I just put it on, give it a few minutes and wipe it off. So now I'm going to start working on the end caps of the cabinets um, because what's there right now is a veneer and it's not real wood so I can't stain it so I have to make my own. Uh, what I have here is three quarter inch plywood, very thin, uh, it's pretty fragile and if you sand it too much you can go right through it to the ugly part, the, the part just really really thin layer of wood on the top but that's all I need, I think it's going to be fine. Um, I'm going to use a very fine, I think it's 20, 
teeth uh, saw blade for my jigsaw to hopefully not just tear it up as I saw. And um, I'm going to use one of these to make sure that my edges are square when I measure out before I make my cuts. And now I'm measuring out the width of it. Mine is 11 and 2 sixteenths. Okay, so the wood that I was able to find is not as tall as I need it. So what I'm going to have to do is do two panels. So I just measured out a good uh, separation point for the panels and then I'll probably just get a small trim piece to put on top to hide the seam. Okay, so my first piece I measured out, I'm going to do 34 and a half long. And in order to do that properly, I marked 34 and a half on my wood. And then I take my edge to make sure, whoops, so I take this and I make sure that it's flush with this edge and that way my line will be square. And then I can just mark it along the way. Make sure I don't go wonky. And I use my square again. Here I have the end of the pantry cabinet that I need to put my wood on that I stained and cut. So I am just going to use liquid nails on it and uh, that should do fine. It's real light. Now I'm just going to put it up there. some pressure on it. Have a piece of trim to cover this edge and I have one also for the side and now I need to measure the trim so I'll put that up here I cut it pretty close at home but I wanted to be certain finish it when I got here okay so I'm gonna cut a 45 degree angle here and then put a piece of trim here Well, as you can see, I forgot to record the last part where I was putting on the trim on that end piece. And what I did was I just used a little bit of liquid nails and I put it up there with the adhesive and then I put in really small finished nails and I used a countersink to sink that nail in a little bit deeper than flush. And then I put the wood putty that matched the finish on top of that to cover that. I had a couple other spots where the trim didn't quite meet up and I used this for that also. But as you can see, anyone can do this project as long as you're willing to dedicate the time to it. So I hope you enjoyed watching the process and um, I will see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video with others if you liked it. See you next time. Mm -hmm.